Another element of disciplines is their theories of knowledge about the world, their ways of thinking about, studying, measuring, describing, and explaining human phenomena. Epistemology is the branch of philosophy that studies knowledge, how we come to gain knowledge, how we know that our knowledge is accurate, how we validate whether knowledge is objectively true. The epistemic norms of a discipline are agreements about how scholars develop knowledge in their field, how they select evidence or data, how they evaluate their research methods, and how they evaluate their own theories. Disciplinarians use two major approaches. Modernists or positivists believe that knowledge comes from perception, experience, and observation. And they believe that knowing the objective truth about some phenomenon is possible. They believe if we stick to the principles of the scientific method, we can come to some understanding of the phenomenon. Postmodernists question these beliefs. They say there's no way to know the objective truth. There's no way to study it. They are skeptical of disciplinary explanations for phenomena. Nihilists take an even more extreme approach, but are represented by postmodernism. Interdisciplinarians, on the other hand, try to use an approach that appreciates both of these approaches. One that believes we can understand phenomena by studying it, but that also recognizes the limitations of our ability to do that. As you reviewed the epistemologies of your two disciplines, you may have noticed some similarities and differences in their approaches. Disciplines can differ in a number of ways. Some focus more on external reality, while others focus more on how reality is constructed in our minds. Some are objectively more objective than others, depending on the research methods they use. In some disciplines, the outcomes of scholarship are absolute. The conclusions are objective truth. In other disciplines, it's recognized that scholarship is more of a matter of opinion than fact. Some disciplines are very intentional and specific and detailed in the language they use to describe and explain human phenomena, while other disciplines use more ambiguous language. The challenge is that outsiders who are not familiar with the language struggle to understand the message behind the words they're reading or hearing. Only people within that discipline understand that discipline's language. In some disciplines, the knowledge that is created will represent the human condition for centuries. For example, biology, chemistry, physics. In other disciplines, the knowledge that is created is ever-changing, and the discipline itself will change and adjust as new knowledge is gained. Fields like psychology, sociology, anthropology. In the natural sciences, empiricism dominates. Knowledge is gained through experience. This is why observation and experimentation are commonly used in the natural sciences. However, their way of thinking about the world is not set up to address value issues. This point makes me think about the scene in one of my favorite movies, Jurassic Park, when Dr. Ian Malcolm says, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, that they didn't stop to think if they should. The natural sciences have high predictive power, but that power can be used to destroy 
humanity instead of understand it and improve it. The social sciences embrace multiple epistemologies. There's great variance in the social sciences in terms of how they think about, how they study, how they validate the truth. In the humanities, diversity of perspective is highly valued, probably more so than in the other two categories. The textbook contains several tables that describe the epistemologies of several disciplines in the natural sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities. Please take a moment to review the descriptions of your two disciplines. When it comes to interdisciplinary studies, we try to avoid the extremes with modernist optimism on one side and postmodernist pessimism on the other. We try to take on a more balanced approach. We know that no one discipline can completely understand a phenomenon, but we also know that interdisciplinarity can get us a little bit closer to complete understanding than simply disciplinarity. We also try to practice epistemological self-reflexivity by considering the limitations of a system of knowledge. The way that a discipline studies a phenomenon, for example, will impact the kind of outcomes they observe and therefore will impact the conclusions they draw. Ideally, we'd want to use all research methods to study a single phenomenon. No one epistemology is the best. For this reason, we try to respect all of them. Each one has its strengths and weaknesses in the context of a given issue. If we consider a different issue, the strengths and weaknesses of a discipline will be different for that issue. 